So multiplexers are really quite useful components. Uh, they can be used to connect multiple inputs to a single output, and that can be used for, of course, data transmission or item selections or things like that. And so it stands to reason that it's actually quite useful to know how to build one of these things in your uh, redstone circuits. And so if you recall back to the earlier tutorials in this, in this playlist, uh, you know that a multiplexer is basically just a group of buffers that are tied to an OR gate. And in this case, we're going to be working with a, a two input multiplexer just to keep things simple. Uh, we'll, of course, cover four and eight input multiplexers, and then the rest is basically just scaling it up. Uh, but with these uh, buffers, if the buffer is disabled, the input's not getting through. With the buffer enabled, it is getting through. And so what we want is we want these buffers to uh, complement each other. So if one buffer is enabled, the other is disabled, and vice versa. And the easiest way to do that is to just use an inverter. And so with this configuration, I know I drew that kind of poorly, but with this configuration, with the input at a zero, uh, this input or this output is a one, which means this buffer is enabled and this one is disabled, which means this input gets through and this one doesn't. Uh, but with those roles reversed, with the input being a one, this is going to be a zero, which means this buffer is disabled and this one is enabled, which means this input is able to get through. So how do we actually build that as a, as a circuit? Well, it's actually quite simple. Uh, we've already got pretty much all the components we need, so we just need a buffer, which again is just an AND gate. I think I've covered that in a previous video already. And of course, we'll need two of them. And those are connected together through an OR gate. And they go to whatever device you want to go to. So then, of course, we need some inputs. And in this case, we're just going to use some levers. And we also need a control signal, and, and this is going to dictate which uh, signal is actually making its way through. So we'll just connect that right up to one AND gate, and then connect it through to the other one uh, through an inverter. Just like that. So now with this configuration, we can see that this input is able to make its way through to the output just fine, whereas this one is not. And then by switching the control input, uh, we disable this input, so this is no longer making its way through. And this one is making its way through. Now you can, of course, compress this circuit very easily by just rearranging and uh, adjusting the, the logic gates. Uh, but there's, a, there's actually another variation to this circuit that's actually a lot more popular amongst the Redstone uh, computer building community. Uh, and it looks a little something like this. So we have two inputs, one on top of the other. Both are using repeaters, and the repeaters are important. Uh, add levers there, and then staircase up like this. And a couple pieces of redstone. So with this particular configuration, we can see that, uh, well, we can activate this lever, it's going to activate the repeater, but the signal doesn't make it to the output. Uh, but if we activate this repeater, uh, then it does actually power this redstone, and that powers the output. So the signal is able to make its way through there. But watch what happens when I place a block here. So that cuts the redstone wire. So now this repeater, even though it's still powering this redstone, the output is no longer responding. Uh, and if I activate this repeater, uh, the power is actually able to make its way through the block to the output. So we've effect uh, effectively just multiplexed these two inputs just by adding a block. Unfortunately, there is a mechanism in Minecraft that allows us to place and remove blocks fairly easily. And we just use a piston. So now with this particular setup, we now have the ability to multiplex between uh, two inputs using a control input. And then of course, you can, because this is vertical and one wide, you can, of course, tile them uh, indefinitely. And uh, if you have space constraints, I find what helps is you uh, can actually replace this with slime and just build that out as far as you want. Uh, and this still works the same. You can see that the slime still conducts redstone signals and we'll still cut it off if need be. So it works just the same. Okay, so that covers the two input multiplexer. How about a four input multiplexer? Uh, well, what we can actually do is we can actually connect two input multiplexers together to create a four input multiplexer. So what we can do is we can actually create another two input multiplexer like this 
with our two inputs. And what this will do is this will multiplex, this multiplexer will multiplex these two inputs, this multiplexer will imp uh, multiplex these two inputs, and it'll produce another two inputs. And we can actually tie these two control lines together. So when we send a signal uh, into this line, both these multiplexers will select, we'll say, like this, this input. And if we don't send the signal, they'll both select these inputs. Uh, but then we can take both of these signals and we can send them to yet another multiplexer. And that creates another selection line and another output. And so with this selection line, uh, we basically use it to select between these two multiplexers. So with this one off, it's maybe selecting this one. With this one on, it's maybe selecting... Oh, maybe selecting this one. So if we wanted to, say select this line, we would need to activate this line which would cause this multiplexer to select this input and forward it on, but then we would need to select this multiplexer at this multiplexer, so we would need to send the signal here, and that would allow this input to pass all the way to the end. And that's certainly one way of doing it, and of course uh, the other way that you were shown how to do it is to just use uh, a decoder so we can actually just use a two input decoder to create four outputs and then we just connect those to four buffers and I know this is some really poor penmanship but just bear with me and then that all of course goes into uh, an OR gate. A really badly drawn OR gate, but an OR gate nonetheless. So, both of these ways of doing it are valid, but we tend to work with this one because it's actually a lot easier to build in Minecraft. And so I'll show you how that works here. So again, we basically just need to create four AND gates and four inputs. So we'll create our four inputs. And so effectively what we've done is we've just created four AND gates, or four buffers, that we've tied together through an OR gate. And so the idea is that we would hook this up to a decoder, and only one of these would ever be active at any given time, and only the one that is active is actually able to make its way through. So you can see none of the other ones are able to make their way through. And then of course hooking this thing up to a decoder is actually very simple. All we have to do is, well, just build the decoder. And so with the decoder built, we can now control our multiplexer just with two inputs here. So if we select 0, 0, uh, the input 0, 0 is going to be selected and nothing else. But if we select another input, say 1, 1, well now 0, 0 is no longer selected, so that's not going to make it through, nor are any of the others. But output or input 1, 1 will. And so if you wanted to extend this even further uh, to create an 8, 16, 32, or 64 uh, input multiplexer, uh, you basically just need to repeat this over and over again, uh, creating a larger decoder and then making more AND gates. And then, of course, there's different ways of doing this. This is just one variation, of course, but you can make other multiplexers fairly easily. And there are a plethora of tutorials out there. I would highly recommend giving some of them a search. And I'll even include some of them in this playlist. But... Hopefully that should help you at least get started in uh, making multiplexers for your circuit.